हेलो पीपल वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल द टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज वीडियो इज कॉन्सेप्ट लर्निंग सो सो फार वी हैव सीन मशीन लर्निंग एंड एक्टिव लर्निंग सो कॉन्सेप्ट लर्निंग इज द कॉन्सेप्ट बिहाइंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स सो दिस मशीन लर्निंग एंड एक्टिव लर्निंग एंड ऑल जिस स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस कॉन्सेप्ट लर्निंग सो द बेसिस फॉर ऑल ऑफ दिस इज कॉन्सेप्ट लर्निंग सो टूडे विल बी सींग वॉट आर दी कॉन्सेप्ट विच आर देर इन दी कॉन्सेप्ट लर्निंग एंड हाउ uh it's differentiated uh, between the active learning and machine learning so uh we are living in this world so in this universe there are uh, many different objects so uh along with that we have different concepts as well so say this is the universe uh this rectangle is a universe we are living in and say inside this uh, we have a simple example so i'll just take a concept of phones that is your normal mobile phones now uh, what you have in this phones we have different different concepts like you have tablet phones then you have smart phones etc now uh, just for our convenience and just for understanding about this concept learning is i'll just uh, focus or restrict to uh, these two concepts now uh, we have these two available types of uh, basic phones one is smartphone and the other one is tablet so let it uh, be any brand apple or uh, samsung or any other brands so it's restricted to uh, these two now in tablet phones uh, you can put a sim card and just call so it has a cellular extension similarly for smartphone that is a basic use uh, for why you use the smartphones now uh, what you basically have is uh, say there are different number of features which are being distinguishing this tablet and smartphones so uh, let me just take uh, four different unique features obviously there are uh, different uh, features but just for the convenience i'll just take only uh, four of this so what i have is features of this phones now say the size sizes i have say values small and large color i have say gray and black color then say i have the screen type i have a uh, normal flat screen type and the other one say i have uh, you have folded screen types so certain variants of samsung comes with a uh, folded screen type and say one more example feature that is we have the shape so for a tablet we have a shape something like a square and for a smartphone say we have a rectangle so there are n number of different features like uh, the diameter of the audio jack etc so i am not uh, going to all of those uh, just i'm restricting to only uh, these four features now if you look into these features uh, the values of these features are binary so it's a binary valued attribute now see uh, the each of this phones in this can be uniquely identified by uh, all of this features so uh, say any particular concept that i am representing with the help of c so that is represented by say this is represented by x1 and this is by x2 this is by x3 and this is by x4 so this particular concept can be represented by x1 x2 x3 and x4 where each of this attributes can take only one value at a time so uh, say i have tablet so i am expressing the concept of tablet so x1 x1 is the size so we have large here and say we have the color suppose i take black and screen type i have flat then shape say i am taking square and for smartphones say i am taking this as small it's handy then uh, say i am taking it as gray and i have folded type of screens and this is rectangle now what i have represented is uh, i have uniquely defined each of this concept by a set of uh, features having 
a binary uh, value now what possibly you can do is you can have 2 raised to d possible number of instances out of this possible instances so where d represents this features so let's call all these things as d so uh, now how many ways you can have different instances so there are uh, 2 raised to d possible number of ways you can have these many instances and since we have two of these concepts possible concepts out of these from this 2 raised to d possible instances are 2 raised to 2 raised to d so if i talk that is this entire thing is the possible concepts and this particular thing is the possible instances so uh, let's put the value so say you have d is equal to 4 here which is uh, in this case so you have 2 raised to d which is 2 raised to 4 you get 16 and if you have this that is 2 raised to 16 so these many possible concepts uh, you can generate by this set of features now this is uh, or this representation is possible only when you have binary valued attributes now say for uh, instance uh, the screen type folded and say you have curved now uh, this particular attribute is no longer taking a binary valued attribute now this has only uh, three valued attributes so there you cannot express the number of possible instances in terms of 2 raised to power why because it's not a, a power of this so in that case what you will have is basically 2 raised to 96 so these many possible concepts would be there so there you cannot express this in terms of 2 raised to d because uh, this is no longer now a binary valued attribute now having talked about this uh, what we have done is so uh, in this particular uh, universe of phones we have many other things possible which will be uh, coming in the future uh, times now what we have done is we have restricted to only a particular section or particular concept out of this so what i did is i essentially had a large concept space now from this large concept space what i have did is i just considered only a subset so i am interested in learning only about this particular region so where i reduced my concept space to a smaller region for the study now this process is called as inductive bias so this we essentially do in uh, active learning scenarios where our concept space or where we need to do the testing or uh, where we need to do certain kind of processes are large but then only we want to restrict our search space or target space only to a particular uh, region so this is also called as the target concept so where we are only interested in learning about this particular uh, region and so this is also called as our hypothesis space which we are interested in learning now uh, what we have spoken is we have this inductive bias where we reduce a huge space uh, to some small region so uh, likewise we have similar different concepts now there is one particular thing which is called as conjunctive concepts now from the name itself we have this conjunctive conjunctive means uh, you just add different variables or which is combination of two or more things yeah so uh, we have this conjunction with the help of this and operation so any uh, one particular concept can be uniquely represented by the combination of two attributes or two or more attributes so that we can have this so you have this tablet so that can be represented by say large and black and flat and square so uh, this is what conjunctive concepts is or you can have uh, say a subset of these two so 
instead of representing uh, by all of this you can have large and square so somewhat uh, you can have the idea of uh, that this particular concept is referring to this tablet so this is what conjunctive concepts is now you need to uh, know one particular thing uh, you have something called as accept all condition so say for example if i write a concept something like this so this represents that you don't care about what particular features you are looking into now uh, just to consider this is called as accept all or this is called as the most general hypothesis Now, say for instance, uh, these are my features. I just plug into all of this. So, it's very uh, specific that I need a screen size which is large and I need a phone which is black and the screen type should be flat and square. But if you just put this uh, particular concept or this is our hypothesis, that means that it doesn't care what is the screen size or what is the color or what is the shape, what is the size regardless of uh, whatever i can accept all so if anything comes here you just accept all regardless uh, you are very specific about it so it's like uh, there are some people uh, who will accept any kind of phones regardless it's apple or samsung or redmi or anything like that so you can consider uh, this in that way and you then have something like fee which stands for reject all or it's called as the specific hypothesis so there are some people who don't like the phones at all so you can just uh, consider that way or uh, people who don't uh, believe in this uh, having smartphones and so on so you can just uh, consider in that way that is one is the most general hypothesis and the other one is the most specific hypothesis now uh, in active learning what we need to do is uh, we have a set of uh, samples so we'll just check whether that particular instance will be having or it's a part of that particular concept or not so whatever we did in machine learning say we had this uh, samples xi so there we kept a set of labels as well so xi stands for say x1 x2 x3 up till xn we had n number of samples and for each of the sample we kept a particular label so theta i say it belongs to positive and negative class so here you maintained two different sets for representing two different kind of things now in uh, concept learning it's different so what you have basically here is you have this xi and you check whether it's part of this concept or not so here essentially this particular thing becomes your training sample so this is your training sample under consideration now say for example i am giving a sample say i have a redmi so redmi is one particular uh, phone so it's a brand or a phone so it comes under smartphones right so if you uh, just check with the compatibility of redmi with this concept yes it belongs to this concept so there it is a one and if i say apple now apple is a brand but it's not a phone but you don't have any concepts which are under this so in that case the concept of apple according to this spaces is equal to zero so either c of x is one or c of x is equal to zero so these are uh, classified as positive and negative examples now i have spoken regarding uh, this reduction in the hypothesis space so uh, our goal uh, in concept learning is to find all those concepts or the hypothesis which are consistent with this space that is c of x now just for uh, understanding this i'll just take an example regarding what is 
hypothesis space and what is version space. So, say uh, we are in the year 1990. Now, there at that time we had different types of phones. We had this uh, cordless phones, then we had wireless phones, wired phones and n number of things. But uh, the innovator of uh, this recent times have the idea of having the bezel-less phones or uh, the touch screen phones or something like that. So there at that time say this was our hypothesis now hypothesis is something uh, which is not present or which is just an abstract thing right so uh, we have this n number of different hypotheses so these are the different uh, concepts which are there in this so this is say android phone or this is some say bezel-less phone this is uh, foldable phones or something like that so in the year 1990 all these things were in the hypothesis space now as and when time progressed now in the year 2020 what you have is you have this migration of some of or all of this x2 x3 x1 so all of this to this uh, new space now this new space is called as the version space so there in that time period all of these things by the innovator or the creator or the designer who were all uh, behind these brains in that period of time all these things were in the hypothesis space but in the recent time or in the recent years there was an outbreak of all these different phones so now in the recent time you have all these versions available and then you have the variants and so on and so forth so this is called as the version space now uh, we saw what was active learning we know what is machine learning and now we also know what is concept learning so what is the difference between all of this so basically we start with machine learning so machine learning is uh, that we create a model or a classifier in order to predict something and to obtain some level of accuracy so this was a basic goal of our uh, machine learning or why we do machine learning that is for prediction and to have a higher level of accuracy now what is the goal of active learning is to reduce this particular space so we have a huge space but we are interested in only learning about a subset of this so reduction in the search space but actually this reduction and this concept this hypothesis this specificity and all comes from the concept learning so that's where the difference between active learning machine learning and concept learning is so well that was all regarding uh, the concept learning in machine learning so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to watch edge of this video please do like share comment and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing thank you very much for watching this video